Yeah, I don't feel like, oh, what's what's this look like? Yeah. Nice. So, how's it going guys? Today here, I'm outside, a little bit of change of scenery, and I wanna ask you guys an interesting question. The question I wanna ask is, what do you think is the most ideal impact position? And to answer that question, I'm gonna demonstrate three different type of impact, impact positions, and you tell me which one you think is correct. So, let's get through it. Here I have the golf ball right here. And so, this will be the first impact position. Okay, next, this is the second impact position. And lastly, this is the third impact position. So, out of those different impact positions, which one do you think is the most correct to be most optimal? And as we know, the impact position is so critical because it'll influence how far we hit it, our distance, our distance control, the fake control we have, and the trajectory of the golf ball. So think about that for a second and let me know what you think. So after thinking about the question in terms of which impact position you think will be most optimal, let's review actually which one is correct and why. So let's review the impact positions again. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Now, when we think of an iron shot, we know that we want to compress the golf ball, right? Which in a sense, we're hitting the ball down and through. But even more so, we need to have the correct loft at impact for it to be a penetrating and low ball flight. So in order to do that, what do we need? We need shaft length. So if we review the correct, if we review the impact positions, as we can see, this impact position has the shaft lean moving backwards, which will increase the loft we have at impact, which is what we don't want. Here is an impact position with the same loft and address, which we still don't want because that's not the most optimal. So the last impact position we have shaft lean forward that is what is going to decrease the loft we have an impact to compress the golf ball and have that low penetrating ball flight so now that we have that answer let's think about what's the number one reason why most times we have it where at impact we have the shaft lean either backwards or just how it was at address so we're going to review that next so hey guys before we continue this video, I wanna ask you guys a question. All the swing talk, all the mechanics talk, and just improving our technique in golf in general, what is the actual purpose? Well, we know at the end of the day is to improve our scores where? On the golf course. However, what do we need to do to improve our scores on the golf course? Well, we need to practice properly and we need to identify our strengths and weaknesses to figure out what we need to prioritize to improve our scores the most efficient way. So, I wanna give you guys something. I've recently made two eBooks. One, an eBook on how to, apply, how to apply your range game to the golf course by giving you a game to do daily on the range to help improve your performance, as well as another eBook, a statistics eBook, to help you keep track simply of your stats on the golf course as well as to give you a detailed picture of your game so you can track the areas that you need to improve most in.
So if you want to know how to improve the quality of your practice when you go to the range to apply to the golf course, and as well to have a statistics ebook completely broken down in detail to help you show what you need to work on in your game in the back of your pocket, go ahead and click that link down below. So now that we went through those three impact positions and figured out what the most optimal one is, now let's understand why most times we can't get that impact position. So the main reason why that happens in terms of not having the ideal impact position and having it where we increase loft at impact, which reduces the optimal ball flight that we want, is called a cast. And most, most people have heard of it, but let's define it. So a cast will be described as when from the top and coming to the downswing, instead of where we put a force on this grip end and as we rotate and keep going, that we have this shaft lean, instead, it is where the momentum of the club head overtakes the force we put on the grip end. So instead of it being where the force of the grip end overtakes the momentum of the club head, now we have it where the momentum of the club head overtakes the force we put on the grip. And that results in the cast that we have an impact. So why is that the case? Well. 99.9% .9 of the time, why most times you may have a cast is because of trying to square the club face too late. So let's go deeper into that. A lot of times, I'm gonna go from down the line. A lot of times, if we have an open club face and then my brain knows that I need to square the club face in order to have the ball go straight, my body will respond by trying to square it late. And trying to square it too late is what causes this cast. So that's the main reason why the momentum of the club head overtakes the force on the grip end. is because my brain knows if I have this force on the grip end overtake the club head with an open face, from this position, the ball's gonna go right. So instead, what we do as a response, our brain is pretty smart, is instead we stop the rotation of our body and let the momentum of the club head overtake the force we put on the grid, which will square the face, but it doesn't produce the most optimal loft you want at impact. So that's the main reason why we have a cast. So now we're going to review how we can resolve that solution to where we can square the club face earlier and then as a result, we're able to have more shaft lean to produce a better impact position and a more optimal ball flight. So now that we reviewed the number one reason why we have a cast, which is trying to square the club too late, let's review some of the culprits that happens when we try to square the club too late, but as well, what we can look at to square it up earlier. So let's review what can happen if we try to square it up too late. So ideally, if I'm swinging the golf club and I have a square club face, that'll allow me to keep rotating through the shot without any manipulation. However, if we have it where we try to square the club face too late, then what we'll have is, is we'll have it where one, the process of me trying to square it too late, I can swing over the top, or from this position, I can try to square it this way come from the inside and then start to early extend so it was just like it would look like this so I'm coming from the inside but I'm still trying to square it early and then I have to early extend to get down to the golf ball so those are the two main corpus that can happen with trying to square the club face too late so what can we address to square the club face earlier well the first thing we can look at is our grip we want we want to have it where we have a strong enough grip at setup, which will enable us to rotate later. So for me, what I like to do is to make sure I at least see about two to three knuckles on my V hand. And then also as well, try to see the V of my right hand pointed towards my right shoulder. And now we can see the club face is square. Or even more so if you have a glove for the lead hand, what I like to see is the logo 
facing forward ahead of you, so towards the camera. So that's the first thing we wanna address. You don't want our grip to be too weak because then if we have our grip too weak, that'll be an open club face, especially as we start swinging the golf club and then we start to square it too late because we're gonna have it square earlier. So the next thing that can happen is too much forearm roll in the takeaway. So a lot of times we can have it where we have a strong enough grip. However, we form roll it to the inside in our takeaway. So as we see here, I have a strong grip, but if I form roll it this way, now my open club face is here. And then we have the same effect where we have to square it later, which is what we don't want. And then lastly, the last thing that we have in general is just having the club face open at the top. So even if we have a strong grip from here, if we manipulate it where all of a sudden this wrist gets cut and then this opens the club face, then we have to square it, early, square it later as well, which will produce that impact position and that cast that we don't want. So those are the three things that we want to address. The first thing is having a strong enough grip. Then the second thing is making sure our takeaway, we keep the club face square. So by turning instead of too much form roll, and then even as you go to the top, even from here, if we squared and it's all good, then we don't want to manipulate mostly the lead wrist to where we have too much radio deviation, which causes the club face to open as well. So that's, those are the main factors that we want to address first. So next, what I'm going to do is show you a drill that will help you to learn how to score the club face earlier. And as a result, your body will respond naturally to get that shaft and impact and have that low penetrating ball play. So now what we're going to do is go over a drill that will help you to rewire your brain, which will enable you to understand what it feels like to square the club face earlier instead of squaring it later, which will produce that cast. So this drill is called the closed club face drill. So what I want you to do, so set up square to it. Then as you set up to the ball, I want you to turn the club face closed about 30 to 45 degrees. So as you can see here, if I'm right here, what I want to do, instead of having it just square, I'm going to turn it about 30, 45 degrees closed. So now when I look at it, when I look down at the ball, the club face looks completely closed, about 30 to 45 degrees left of my target. So I know it'll seem weird, but I want you to go with it. And then from there, what we're gonna do is, with that closed club face, we're gonna hit some small shots. So when I say small shots, I like to describe it as a nine to three drill, where at nine o'clock we have the left arm parallel to the ground, and then we're going through to a halfway finish with the right arm parallel to the ground. What I want you to do is to hit some nine to three shots where you have this closed club face, so 30 to 45 degrees left of your target. However, you're gonna hit the ball straight at the target or even the fade. So now what that's gonna allow you to do is instead of if we were casting and we had an open club face, we're trying to close it and score it late. Now, since we have a closed club face so early, now we're trying to keep the club face open in a sense. And the only way we can keep the club face open with this kind of a face is by rotation. And that rotation now will allow for that shaft lean that we want. So it's tricking and rewiring your brain and showing you a different club face position in order for you to respond and rotate correctly. So again, you'll set up to the ball. So let's look here. We set up to the ball, have it 30 to 45 degrees closed. So it'll look very much pointed left of your target. And then now what you're gonna do is left arm parallel and then right arm parallel. And I want you to hold the finish. And I want you to work on hitting the ball straight at that target. And so you'll know that you're doing it right is if the ball's going straight or is if it, or if it's even fading and you'll notice that the ball flight would be way more penetrating and lower versus if you try to square and still have that cast 
then you're gonna hit snap hooks. So this is we wiring our brain in order to have it where if I have this close club face, as I get to this position, you can see it's super close, kind of like Dustin Johnson does. And what he does from there is rotates like crazy with his chest and pelvis in order to keep that club face open. And in order to keep that club face open, we need to rotate the chest and hips. And the more we rotate, the more shafting we can get versus when our rotation stops, then that's when we square that club face later. So I want you to try out that drill and I want you to commit to it because I know it can seem weird, just like any swing change, but then as you get used to it, just like working out, a lot of times when you first start doing the weight, it feels uncomfortable, but then over time, it gets comfortable and then you have to go even more. So same thing with this drill. As you keep doing it, you'll get used to it. And then as your ball flight gets better, you can manipulate how much the face is gonna be closed. So instead of it being here to respond, you may only need this. And then eventually you can have it where just the face is square. And then you have the factors in place in order to square that club face earlier and get that shaft lean and have the impact position that we want instead of having that cast. So I want you to hopefully you took some things from this video in terms of how to have a better impact position. And I hope to see you guys next time. Let me know if you have any questions down about this drill in the comments. <laughs>